in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Lots of stuff to talk about, very important stuff to talk about on the Paracast this week. Let me tell you right off the bat, later on the show in our second segment, we'll be featuring the famed cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman. Back after a couple of years, he's going to have a lot of great things to say. We have a number of questions from our listeners. We'll get to that. Now, as you know, any show like this, when you're in the public eye, you get reviewed. Some people hate you. Some people love you. They hate me. They, I don't know. I don't think anybody loves me. Maybe my son, maybe my dog. They love Chris. Some people maybe are not so happy about him. They'll comment about the fact that they think we run too many commercials, you know, all this thing. We expect that. So this time, I saw a review in iTunes where they said Chris talks as if he has marbles or chewing tobacco in his mouth. Chris, how do you answer a charge like that? I don't talk like that. Uh, Who is this guy? This reminds me, by the way, in the old days, if you ever watch the old Western movies from like the 40s and 50s or even the 30s, there was this old actor named George Gabby Hayes. And he talked like that. He talked like he had marbles in his mouth. And the reason is he had false teeth. And so when he went before the camera to be in character, he took his teeth out. Seriously. <laughs> to, to get that kind of garbled... Kind of slappy sound. Yeah, that kind of sloppy, <laughs> slappy sound like he's either half drunk or something. Right. And that shows dedication because, you know, most performers have an ego. So you want to fix your hair, you want to replace your hair, your teeth, everything. The first thing you do when you appear as an actor, they'll send you to get dental implants if they don't like your teeth. Right, right, of course. Well, Gene, we're just who we are. You know, I do adopt uh, kind of semi-personas, if you you will. But, uh, you know, pretty much what you hear is what you get. So there. There you go. (laughs) Exactly. But the thing is here, no matter what you do, somebody will dislike yeah, of you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Somebody's going to have something to say that's, you know, maybe not too uh, pleasant or uh, congratulatory, whatever. And that and that's cool. You know, everybody, you know, back ends are like uh, opinions. Everybody has one. So, you know, we, we got to give everybody that. That's why the Paracast is so loved, especially online at forum.theparacast.com, because we have great threads Engaging subjects, incredible minds. Uh, I learn something there every day. You know, I, I really, onwards and upwards. Um, I think we're doing a great job, Gene, and uh, be good to get a little extra content in there for some sort of, you know, maybe progression on this whole theme. I'm having fun. I know you are too, despite the ups and downs. We have great guests, and we got a good one today too, boy. I can't wait to talk to Lauren. Oh, yes, he's always a tremendous guest. Let's briefly talk about. A favorite subject of yours, because it's part of your book, Stalking the Hurt. And forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, but I know some people don't like when you promote your stuff. But, you know, every radio show out there where they have something to promote, a public appearance or anything else, they mention every episode, that guy on Fox News, Bill O'Reilly, every single show he promotes his books, his online site, the orders he takes for custom merchandise. Yeah, even Bill Maher. I mean, come on. You know, it, it's not a big deal. I mean, I have, a, I think, an important book out. And the more people hear about it, know about it, and are intrigued enough about their own health and the environment and, and our, our relationship with livestock. I mean, it's such a closet subject. And I think everybody should at least be aware of the information that's out there. Okay, so we talked about the meat industry and the horrible conditions under which the cattle is kept in preparation for the slaughter. Now, there's a story at CNN this week on CNN Tech called How Test Tube Meat Could Be the Future of Food. And I was thinking here, maybe we should just have replicators like in Star Trek. They take the raw ingredients. It's like a 3D printer almost. Soy and green. Oh, with soil and green is people. (laughs) It's people! That was the last movie, by the way, that Edward G. Robinson made. Of course, we remember him from doing all the gangster movies of the 30s and 40s. And they did this movie with, I can't think of the actor. Charlton Heston, of course. Charlton Heston, right. He'll shoot me from beyond the grave because okay. he, was a big, he was a big NRA guy. So he would shoot me from beyond the grave for forgetting Charlton Heston. But 
The final line in the movie was from Edward G. Robinson, Soylent Green is people. But no, test tube meat. Let's be serious about okay. it. So they well, gee, are. I don't know. Uh, you know, science just loves to uh, play around and, and discover new things and, and tinker and play with Mother Nature. You know, you got that's a slippery slope. You know, there's so many implications um, of this particular claim and, and of a development. There's a, a ton of implications. And I think we should tread very, very slowly, very carefully and, and really dot our I's and cross our T's, so to speak. Well, I always worry when you do something like this, will you have all the ingredients in this test tube meat that you have in meat that's normally processed? And I'm thinking in terms of vitamins, minerals, other chemicals, is there the possibility of introducing something that's harmful to people? Of course. Because science does that, you know. Are you going to have different elements of the meat industry opposing this or using it as another profit center? Cattle is like oil on the planet. Um, I really believe that. The longer we go on utilizing cattle for protein, uh, you know, food-derived protein, and as long as we go on using petro products uh, to power our, our world, uh, we're, we're really headed toward disaster. I, I really do have a sense of that. And, and this whole idea of meat protein is, is just it's not addressed in our culture. This is just not – this is verboten. You know, they, nobody wants to, wants to discuss it. It's in the closet. And I think it's important to, to, you know, maybe reignite a debate. Jeremy Rifkin did in the early 90s with Beyond Beef, an excellent book I recommend. Uh, and I could just go down the list of, of books that, that were, you know, well-received, but I think largely ignored by the public because it's, it's a subject that people don't want to deal with. They don't want to think about how that, that chopped meat gets on that piece of styrofoam covered in plastic in the supermarket. I have to tell you, since I've had my gastrointestinal stuff, I haven't had actual beef for probably two or three weeks. I'm still here. I guess I'm still healthy. Yeah. Well, just, you know, eat local if you can. Eat free range. You know, I mean, it's eat less, pay more for eating less. You know, there's 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 ways to, you know, incorporate the research into your own health and diet and in your life and. You know, I'm posting on the. I just posted a, a very interesting article about some of the additives that are now being publicly uh, acknowledged and and explained a little bit about some of the things that go into uh, processing meat and and some of the uh, chemicals. Uh, just you know, I, I don't want to go down that slope right now and get off track, but but it's an important subject. So if we mention stocking the herd and and the implications behind the book, then you know, more power to us. I think. Besides, listen, it's Star Show. If we yes. have something to promote, <laughs> let's promote it. I have yeah, well, nothing to you know, promote. It's thought, an encyclopedia, oh, oh, oh. man. Nobody's written a book like this. Uh, so, you know, it's important. Um, I'll be the first one to, <laughs> to state that. Um, I'll tell you I what. I have only one thing to too. promote here. I have only one thing to promote. Yeah. I have another radio show called The Tech Night Out Live. Right. Okay. About personal technology. It's on every week. It's been online since 2002. We started that four years before we started the Paracast. Yeah. All right? So it's the other show. I have nothing to sell. I have no books out that you want to buy except for Attack of the Rockoids, the sci-fi novel. And we have separate commercials for that, so we don't have to promote that. Promoting things, let's promote our guest who's coming up. There you go. Right. This he, is has, guy- he has no new book out. I mean, he's not promoting anything except his uh, legendary status in the field, uh, I guess. He's promoting his knowledge. Well, that's the same thing, yeah. He is a fountain of knowledge. I want to ask him about cattle mutilations, Gene. He was involved very early on in the 70s, briefly, if I recall. You know, maybe that's what we should start with, because we're focusing on the cattle industry, the beef industry, test tube meat. Maybe the first (laughs) thing we should talk about with Lauren Coleman, you know, bringing up to date on what he's been doing, is to talk about his research into cattle mutilations. That's going to be pretty good. And this is going to be a really great episode, ladies and gentlemen. So get back and ready for this. Lauren Coleman with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. 
This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the Coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R O C K O I D S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TECHNIGHTOWL for a special discount. Mike Stennerson for Midas Resources. At no time in history have precious metals been more important, certainly not in my 22 years in the industry. The dollar has lost over 90% of its value in the last 60 years. No fiat currency has ever survived the government printing presses. Ours is not immune. The time is now to be proactive. 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. Anything tied to the dollar is at risk. CDs, annuities, 401ks, IRAs, stocks, bonds, you name it, so decide. Do you want to leave a legacy of wealth or debt for your family? The choice is yours. Call me at 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. That's 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. Be proactive, not reactive. Call 1-800-686-2237, extension 116. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com. Dot com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X dot com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have a first-class guest. They're all first-class guests, but this one is way, way up there. He's Lauren Coleman. He's a cryptozoologist who's been studying the paranormal for many years. You've heard him on the Paracast before, not in the last couple of years, we're glad to have you back, Lauren, and taking a little time out from your schedule to join us. So in terms of your research and everything, what have you been up to in the recent years? Well, Gene, thank you for having me back. It's great to be here. I've been uh, doing all kinds of things, of course, writing my blog, writing books on cryptozoology, traveling around quite a bit uh, on different documentary shows or at conferences, but also as you know, I'm interested in sociology and copycat effect and twilight language. Being an old Fortean, 
I take it very to heart that cryptozoology is always going to be my first passion, but I'm certainly there to ask a lot of questions about the unexplained in general. Now, Chris wanted to bring up a subject, and this is something you may want to address to start. Now, I don't know if you've seen this new book out yet, Stalking the Herd, about cattle mutilations. No, no, I have not seen it. Chris, why don't you explain the background of the question, and let's proceed from there. Well, hi, hi Lauren. Chris, Chris here. Um, hi, Chris. You know, welcome to the show. And, you know, when I was doing my research about some of the um, the beginnings of a particular uh, theory memes, uh, trying to explain the cattle mutilation mystery back in the early to mid-70s, uh, you know, with the help of David Perkins, my mentor, who, you know, was involved in, in this whole field since 75. He's, I think, the... The most, the preeminent expert, in my opinion, on on the subject. He and I did a real exhaustive sort of backgrounding and and tracing back who told who told who, and came up with some interesting names at the very key beginning of some of the um, various memes that started uh, in the early seventies. And I seem to remember your name in conjunction with Jerry Clark as 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 being someone who very early on investigated cattle mutilations before it became a real you know, mainstream subject in 75, 76, but back in the early, early uh, 70s, I think you were involved in some cases. Um, do you, what do you remember from that time period? And, and what, what were people thinking about these early cases? Well, I actually got involved in it earlier than they were, before they were actually the, the mutilations. I was started uh, very independently of Jerry Clark to, to investigate and gather cattle rustling uh, reports. There were quite. I was in Illinois right. until 1974. I moved to California for a couple of years before I moved to New England uh, in 75. And during that time, I was in Illinois. I started getting in Iowa and Kansas, right, especially and Iowa. Illinois. Yeah, there were lots of uh, you know black helicopters, green helicopters, white vans. You know all of those stories that you've heard with the cattle mutilations were. They seem to have precursors with cattle wrestling. Right. And nobody and could re really figure out. Even gunfights between gun ranchers fight. and, and uh, helicopter crews. There are a couple of cases uh, that were fairly well covered, I think, uh, with right. law enforcement reports and newspaper accounts of, of actual gun, gun battles. In one case, I think right. a guy was even fired on uh, from someone, uh, some unknown party on the ground. And then Jerry Clark got involved, and he had a much more – you know, was it connected to certain politicians? Was it connected to certain people from Hollywood? Was it a, a ritual, satanic thing? Was it UFOs? And, right. and kind of all over the map. And then, of course, those individuals came along with their book saying that it was, you know, coyotes. Right. Um, and so there was all, all kinds of different theories and different answers. And actually, that doesn't disturb me because I think for any one phenomena, there can be multiple answers. Yeah. People kind of get a little too uh, rigid thinking that their answer is the right answer. A little tunnel vision going One on. Answer. Yeah. A little tunnel yeah. vision, blindness. So I kind of backed away from Jerry's, you know, this person was involved or that person, and he was talking to different government people who supposedly were in prison or had secret information. To me, it seemed a little too pat, a little almost as if it was a cover story. It really didn't answer all of the questions, but certainly for a lot of people was satisfying enough. And and then the other thing, of course, is that they didn't disappear, uh, you know, in the 70s. No, as a happening. matter of fact, it, it grew a new face, and these animals were left behind in a mutilated condition, uh, thousands of them. Right, right. So I had enough to do with Bigfoot and nothing, so I'm right. gone. right. You know, I appreciate your candor in, in that uh, aspect. The early cases, I think, from Iowa, I think some from Kansas and other other places prior to the big waves of mutilations in uh, 74, 75, especially in, uh, through 79, those early 72 cases of rustling dovetailed into one of the largest UFO flaps on record in 1973. And it's an interesting correlation David and I discovered is that wherever there was um, helicopter reports, Prior in '72, there were no UFO reports. It's almost like those areas were avoided by um, it, at least examining the the number of cases being reported and where their location. 
uh, just in very interesting parallels. Uh, lots of stuff, as, as you kind of are mentioning here, stewing around and, and then shooting off to become very, very uh, powerful memes, I think, in terms of this subject. And, and uh, you know, it's, I, I really do uh, admire your um, open-mindedness, uh, especially in the cryptozoological realm and your early Fortean leanings, uh, to acknowledge that, you know, there's no one-size-fits-all answer for probably any of these subjects. And it's, it's much more complicated than the media would like us to believe or, you know, experts with drums to bang and their blinders on or whatever. Uh, it's very complicated, and you really need to do the research and, and do your own work, really, to come to a real informed opinion, I would think. Right. right. And uh, I think the other part of it, of course, is that... Uh it's become part of our popular culture, you know, X Files right. with the black helicopters and Jim Keith and, and his black helicopters. It became part of what everybody started talking about and it, and it grew almost its own head. Right. Um, became a, a monster itself. And, it, and I was um, even. So, do you think these that, are real physical reports or do you think they're 40 in nature? Linda Howe would suggest that. Many of these uh, helicopter reports associated with mutilations are actually UFOs cloaked as helicopters. Yeah, well, I mean, she and Betty possible, Hill and a lot of people feel the cloaking thing happens. I, I'm not, I'm not convinced of that. You know, I, I'm not. There's too many reports of law enforcement almost bringing them down, making them smoke, hearing rounds ricocheting off metal. Right. <laughs> um, zero. You know the the film about um, Bin Laden. Right, right. Where, where the, the Navy Zero Seals Dark go over and, Yeah, Zero Dark Thirty. Well, if you'll notice, there's a scene in there where they, they're they in Area 51, and they're looking at the black helicopters they're going to use over there. So we know that there's reality here, and we're not being told everything by the government because they have to have secrets. So uh, sometimes I think some of this thing, these things overlap. Even the, the Clyde... Bundy stuff that's going to right. Stephen Bundy. Right. We're talking about helicopters and that situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff we can get into there. So let's continue. I haven't seen any black helicopters this week, though, so let's just get that straightened out. Okay, we have Lauren Coleman joining Gene and Chris. You're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Think alike. The network for the independent minded. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies paranormal activity, and Fortean phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at WebTV.net. That's MrUFO at webtv.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Mother's Day is right around the corner. 
If you haven't ordered your Mother's Day flowers yet, make sure to visit ProFlowers.com for an amazing deal. ProFlowers has a Mother's Day special for radio listeners. Get 100 gorgeous blooms for mom with a free glass vase for $19.99. And if you want to make her day even more special, upgrade to a premium vase and add gourmet chocolates for just $9.99 more. Mom will be so happy when she unwraps her beautiful bouquet of blooms, guaranteed to stay fresh and beautiful for at least one full week. Each time she looks at her Mother's Day flowers, she'll think of you. But hurry, this deal expires soon, so make sure to place your order today. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to proflowers.com slash radio right now and enter the code PLOW, P-L-O-W, proflowers.com slash radio code PLOW, P-L-O-W. That's proflowers.com slash radio and enter code PLOW, P-L-O-W. There are many things the human body can do very well, but maintaining the proper pH level isn't always one of them. That's where AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops can make a world of difference. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps your body do what's natural. Just a few drops a day helps rid your body of harmful waste and acid while promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Alkalizing boosts your immune system and can help fight headaches, irritability, cramping, and insomnia. Alkalizing also helps the body fight depression and even bone loss. To learn more, more about the importance of alkalizing and how you can find life-changing and vital balance, please visit AlkaVision's brand new website at AlkaVision.com. Same great products, but now easier to use and more informative than ever before. To get your very own plasma pH drops for just $29.95, call 800-518-7615 or visit AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Alkalize your body and supercharge your health at the new AlkaVision.com. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. On the Paracast, Lauren Coleman joins us for the first time in a couple of years. We're really, really pleased to have him here. And Chris and Lauren have been talking at first about cattle mutilations and all the other crazy shenanigans going on. And of course, the black helicopter reared its ugly head. We were talking about that rancher from Nevada. The one who's been fighting the government over grazing his cattle on public lands and everything. But let's just get away from that. (laughs) Don't you think? Get away from that? Well, let's save the tortoise, okay? (laughs) (laughs) It all started with the tortoise. Let the Chinese finance some solar collecting farm or whatever else uh, (laughs) I read about. Yeah. Yeah, let me just point out the reason I was looking into the rustling is because I was trying to see if some Bigfoot were rustling cattle. Well, what about the Momo sightings in Missouri? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the presage the wave of mutilations the following year, year, I think a year and a half later. Right, and Momo was actually seen carrying a dog. um, Right, and a sheep and another one, yeah. Well, there was a sheep, and then in Michigan there was a newspaper man that was delivering, and he saw one of the Bigfoot carrying a goat across the road. Right. So there's been quite a bit in the east. Or the lot and wild man. Remember him? Yeah. He was yeah. wearing the pants that were two sizes too small. And he was leaping off second floor balconies, running across parkways. Uh, tons of newspaper stories about him. You know, I was uh, thinking when you said that, Chris, maybe the reason he was running and jumping is because the pants <laughs> were so tight they were hurting him. <laughs> Well, he, uh, I think he was wearing a plaid shirt, too, if I, if I memory serves me correct. It's interesting. That's another thing that David, uh, David came up with is that— Just so there's no confusion here, Chris is talking about David Perkins, his longtime friend and collaborator. And David, of course, was on a few weeks ago on the PowerCast when we featured Chris's book, Stalking the Herd. We see these kind of hairy humanoid reports or wild men reports uh, in areas that are then subsequently later, a uh, year or two later, then become an epicenter of an outbreak of cattle mutilation reports. It's just, it's, you know, it might just be a coincidence, but I find it uh, very compelling myself. Well, Keel and I talked a lot about this, and there's a slippery slope here because what occurs, of course, when Keel or Jerry Clark or I or you guys would go into an area, we would be very open to everybody telling us about everything. Right. And nobody had talked to them about anything. They had been ridiculed. So you have 
any kind of phenomena happen in the area, people who had seen something else are going to come forward because the recule curtain all of a sudden falls down. Right. Yeah, that's a good talk. point. So we have to be careful about right. making the connections that are more to do with human psychology. Right. Uh, but but also, it's just a, a matter of looking at a timeline and seeing the kinds of things that um, that happen in, in, in uh, on that timeline. Uh, sometimes you, you see what appear to be kind of faint patterns in there, and it's good to at least uh, check them out. Like the black cat uh, sightings down in, I think it was southwestern Illinois, uh, that have been reported for, I think, oh, a couple hundred years. Um, that area was uh, right across the river from a major uh, catamulation area and also i think some of the um what was it i think the later uh momo sightings uh, occurred just across the river from that sure, area the, with river Black road, the river road near st louis and alton yeah but uh you got to remember that keel dug up catamulations in point pleasant when right. man was being seen in pennsylvania in the late 60s yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and one of We're your members, I, Ivan Sanderson, uh, uncovered some up there with him as well, I think. Yeah. I'll never forget in the 70s, in the middle of the night, I got a call from the sheriff's department. And I yeah, it was a big deal. And got in my car and drove about 100 miles and found a cattle mutilation in the middle of New Hampshire. So they're all over. Yeah. Well, did you know Betty Hill investigated uh, the other New Hampshire cattle mutilation case in the early 80s? Uh, the no Charles, the, yeah, the Charles yeah. Witten case. <laughs> uh huh. Only two have ever been reported in New Hampshire, by the way, to my knowledge. None in Maine. Well, none in Maine. There were there. I I investigated two in New Hampshire, so maybe there's three or four. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, think. they didn't make the papers if if there were. So right. so, what have you been up to lately? Uh, what kind of projects do you have uh, going? Obviously, Cryptomundo, one of my my favorite go to sites. Uh, just you know, tons of breaking news always there. Well, That's you're, you're really behind. I had a real uh, definite political falling out with Cryptomundo on the left there in January of 2013. Oh, oh I didn't know so, that. Yeah, well, like, apologies. That's part of the problem. It's hard to get your name off of there because of. Uh, he just froze the site and froze me out, so he left me there. So I'm still getting. Now we talking. Uh, uh, Craig did this. Yes. Oh, I had no idea. Really I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lauren. I didn't realize that. I wouldn't even have brought it up. Yeah. Well, that's a terrible <laughs> thing to do. Welcome to the so paranormal I have a new field. Blog. Yeah, really. I have a, new a new blog called Crypto Zoo News, which it was in the oh, essence okay. of. Oh, I didn't realize that was you. Okay. Well, interesting. Yeah. Crypto Zoo News, because a lot of us came on to Crypto Mundo as writers in the beginning. Right. And we all had letterheads. You know, we all had, and part of the problem was that all disappeared, so it could just be Craig and Crypto Mundo. So I'm not going to go into it too deeply, but a lot of us felt, anyway, I just want to go into it. But I'm not associated with that site. He still has 5,000 of my blogs on there. Right. Uh, that looks like I'm still writing there or something. So. Sometimes I wish that whole site would just disappear so my blogs would disappear from there because I'm not writing there. Yeah, like and UFO still, Mystic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two and a half years later, I mean, or a year and a half later, people still think I'm writing for Crypto Mundo. Yeah, well. I'd... But anyway, besides the blogs and that writings that I'm doing, um, really, since um, the museum that I created moved right. downtown in 2009, a lot of my efforts have been going into preserving uh, archives, preserving different artifacts that used to be thrown away, used to be put in dumpsters, and, and the museum is, is quite huge now. It's over 10,000 items in it, and we get well into 10,000 visitors a year, and wow, we're excellent. expanding all the time and, and uh, different things like that. So that takes uh, – and we've been on quite a few um, – Mysteries at the Museum, Travel Channel, Discovery Channel, right. on TV with that. And that's a way to really get the message out there. That well, and on Facebook, too. You have, you have, you have a, a fairly, fairly uh, highly visible Facebook presence as well, which is where I get a lot of my news about what you're up to, uh, simply on, on Facebook. Yeah, Twitter and Facebook, I, I felt, uh, even though I wasn't sure about it a couple, three years ago, I, I got on there to, to really uh, keep in touch with fans and keep in touch with uh, people that wanted to come to the museum. And that's worked out fairly well, and I, I don't uh, 
you know, I don't do too much personal things on there. I, whether or what I eat for breakfast or what store or restaurant I'm going to, that's not what I'm interested in. Facebook. I thank really heavens! Instagram. Thank heavens! You have yeah, not really. succumbed. Unfollow. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah, Unfollow. Exactly. But I, I have about three thousand followers on Twitter and three thousand wow. different ones on Facebook, so it, it works out well. You know, I wanted to ask you something kind of crazy, and we're going to have to break in a moment here so we can start the answer. I saw a story the other day, and it might relate to something that you have on your crypto zoo news site called New Nessie Sonar Image. And that is, some people claim they were able to see something that appeared to be the Loch Ness Monster using Apple's mapping feature that you have on the iPhone as opposed to the Google Maps feature. Did you ever hear of this? Well, there, there's, I think you're talking maybe about two different things. There was a, uh, there's been those pictures that people are getting off of Google Earth and Apple Earth, and those look like the wake of boats. And then this morning, on May 1st this morning, in Scotland, there was a um, actual posting of a new sonar image, and it looks like it looks like a, a U, upside down U through the water. And people are saying that that's messy. Oh again, boy, let's do the have... break. Let's do the break and then get into okay, more of this. Great. Right. We have Lauren Coleman. Nessie? Hmm. Lauren Coleman joining Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-721-4255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created The Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get The Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. 
Ouch! My back is out again. Hi, Dr. Ortman with Wellspring Spinal Care. If you're experiencing neck, mid, or lower back pain, this information is for you. One of the complaints that I hear is patients receive their typical adjustment, only having to repeat them as the pain returns. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the battle. At Wellspring Spinal Care, we have the entire solution. We use the NUCA approach, utilizing three-dimensional x-rays and gentle touch technology to deliver specific correction. We then design a custom nutritional supplement program which provides essential nutrients targeting the areas of concern. With a NUCA approach and proper nutrition, you'll be on your way to a faster and more permanent recovery. To get you on the road to wellness, visit DrOrtman.com. That's Dr. O-R-T-M-A-N.com. Or call us today, 952-303-9124. That's 952-303-9124. Wellspring Spinal Care, chiropractic done right. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Neighbors, I wanted to mention this before we go on, because I know you hear us asking questions of our guests through a show, and we always mention the Paracast forums, and you really ought to check them out. These are the Paracast forums located at forum.theparacast.com. Make a note of it, forum.theparacast.com. And once you get there, it's very easy to sign up. It doesn't cost you anything, okay? It's free. It's free of charge. And once you sign up, you have what they call threads or topics where you can discuss different aspects of the paranormal and other subjects, politics, whatever's on your mind. We also have a place called The Question Bank. And when we have a guest booked and we have a few days advance warning, we give you a chance to ask questions of that guest. The Paracast Forums. Okay, so did they discover Loch Ness Monster with Apple Maps? Maybe not. We have Lauren Coleman to set us straight. So you have the story on your site, this new sonar image, and you said something is upside down in the image? No, I was just place? trying to describe it to people. That ah, a U, okay. A U, it looks like a U upside down. I'm looking at it now, yes. And so it's showing something going through the water, supposedly. Those are sonar images. But as it's been pointed out by other people, we need different dimensions to really see a scale and, and see a few other things. So it's wonderful for any of these newspapers to put those in there and get everybody excited but it only goes so far. So uh, it's, you know, the jury's still out, so to speak. Certainly in in Scotland, they're very interested in uh, the summer's coming and it's time for people to go to Loch Ness and look for Nessie. You know, we've been looking for Nessie for as long as I can remember, as long as I've been alive. We've been looking for Nessie. How big is this loch and why is it so difficult to find something there if there is a creature? It is an enormous loch. It's over 23 miles long. There's some points where it's a mile across, but that's only one dimension. There's places in Loch Ness that are over 1,000 feet deep, and it's been said by certain mathematicians that there's enough water in Loch Ness to bury every person on Earth under six feet of water. So it it's, has an enormous volume. Even the Operation Deep Scan, where they put six or seven boats with sonar and went from one end to another, they only could scan 60% of the depth of the water. Are there caves there? Probably. Uh, We know that there's over 40 sightings of the creature on land crossing roads. So just because it's in Loch Ness doesn't mean it couldn't be someplace else. It's only six miles down the River Ness to the ocean. So there's lots of factors and variables that doesn't it really um, says that we may have missed what's there, that the numbers are probably small. It's obviously not one Loch Ness monster. It's a breeding population. But there doesn't have to be too many uh, for it to be seen occasionally. So is there a way with all our science, all our technology, to really get this nailed down once and for all? Uh, not really yet. I think that... Everybody feels the god of technology is going to 
you know, film Bigfoot on your cell phone or be able to use some kind of technology and scan lakes. Well, there's a lot of peat in that lake. There's a lot of hidden areas in the lake. And uh, it's not going to, we don't have any magic way of completely making everything uh, more visible in Loch Ness. Okay. There's a lot of peat. It's it's a lot of the water is real smoky and it's very thick with organic uh, yeah. material. Yeah. And yet, I mean, I, I'm a skeptically open-minded cryptozoologist, and I must say that of all of the, the cryptids, there's probably a 50-50 chance that the Loch Ness monsters actually exist because there's a lot better reports from other lakes. There's uh, a long history of people dumping a lot of money into the search for the Loch Ness monster and not coming up with too much. But, of course, one of the problems is that it doesn't leave footprints. Physical evidence is hard to get from a, a lake like that. So we're going to have some frustrating searches still into the future. Well, what uh, freshwater cryptid, let's say, uh, do you feel has the strongest likelihood of existing and, and maybe the first one that we actually uh, determine is real? Well, we certainly know that some of the lakes in Alaska have giant white creatures in them that look like beluga whales. It's never been photographed, never been caught, but there's compelling evidence that those may actually be real. There's some of the smaller lakes around the world. Even uh, Lake Champlain has questions because it freezes over. Uh, here's a lake that looks about as large as Loch Ness. Lots of reports since the 1813, 1816, but... Uh, not a lot of evidence other than photographs. So photographs just don't make it, as you well know, right. from your fields of UFOs. Photographs really don't convince any scientists. Not now they don't. Not with uh, affordable CGI technology and, and really good modeling software and everything else. Uh, the, the hoaxes are getting ridiculously good. And it's really going to blur the line between what is accepted as real and what's being programmed to be uh, believed as real. Uh, versus oh, right. reality itself. I mean, there's some sites online that they, they don't differentiate between obvious hoaxes and what could be real real uh, footage. And, and that has a tendency to, to kind of miseducate people. And, and people start believing this, this, this fabricated sort of fantasy version of a particular phenomenon, whether it's Bigfoot or UFOs or, or ghosts. It's almost like the culture is, is creating its own belief system uh, and, and putting a face on it. Right. You have the movie The Hunt, for instance, uh, with William Defoe looking for the thylacine. And after that film came out, people extracted the CG thylacine, uploaded it online, and said they had new footage of a existing thylacine, you know, Tasmanian tiger. Uh, it's It's a detriment. You know, YouTube has been the worst possible thing to happen for cryptozoology. Right. Well, what do you think of uh, some of the recent footage and evidence that's come out in the Bigfoot realm? Uh, I just saw recently, the last day or two, some purported footage from uh, British Columbia high up in the mountains on a big snowfield, and it appears to be a small a small dot in the distance that, that could be fairly large uh, based on you know what appears to be the perspective and the distances involved. That this is a fairly large, uh, it looks like an upright, form uh, walking in the middle of BF nowhere. I mean, on, it looks like it may even be near a glacier or something. Have you seen that? I think I saw part of it. Part of my problem with most of the footage, of course, is that there's usually no scale. It's extremely far away in distance. Uh, the blow-ups lose any kind of definition of, of details. And the one thing that we need to know the most about is who took it, why did they take it, why are they you know, showing this to us now. Right. In other words, one of the first questions we used to ask in the 70s when somebody brought a footprint to us or a report was to do a psychosocial of the individual, with right. a credibility check. <laughs> right. And a lot of the researchers online skip that. The glitz and gauze, you know, the, the glitz of the, the evidence, the footage, whatever, is what everybody's talking about, and they're forgetting about who took it. Right. Yeah, these anonymous uh, photographs and, and, you know, clips of video, for instance, that, that appear, 
you really have to question them right off the bat because they're not going on the record. They're not stating who they are, why they were taking the footage, as, as you mentioned, which is a really important question. Why did you take a picture of that place in the sky, <laughs> you know? And, um, and, and and why didn't you go over there and see if there were any tracks? Why didn't right. you track over there? Right. Why didn't you get closer? Uh, you know, what is this about? Why did you turn so, the camera off right th- there? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I know we may be in the old guard, and we may be the old guys with kind of conventional go to the end of your detective story, but I still think that's the way to do it. Yeah, there's no substitute for asking the right question uh, with the proper timing. And uh, yep. what I found is uh, based on my field experience, which is, you know, going 20 years back, which isn't very far c- compared to yours and others. But but 20 years ago, I mean, it was pretty cut and dry. There was no Internet. Uh, I was dealing with rural uh, people that really didn't want publicity. Uh, they had no reason to um, state something outrageous. Uh, in fact, oftentimes they're almost embarrassed. And many times I had to, to approach them and convince them it was OK because they refused. So oh, yeah. it, it seems different now. You know, if you're not face to face with somebody, it's it's pretty difficult to ascertain their motivations, who they are. You know, do as you put a credibility check on them, and 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 that's something that I hope we don't lose with this new generation of technology impinging on investigative work. Lauren Coleman joins Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Free from the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. G C N. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER Silver 2014 for 20% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Lauren Coleman is online with us today on the Paracast. We're focusing on all sorts of cryptozoological subjects. And I thought before we get into more topics, Lauren, maybe we could kind of set maybe some of the newer listeners straight about all this. Because, you know, when they think about cryptozoology, everyone thinks, okay, it's got Bigfoot and we've got a Loch Ness monster and this and that. What about the myths? What about the things that people know or believe or expect about this subject that are just dead wrong? Maybe go through a few things. Well, first of all, the way I look at the field, cryptozoology is a study of hidden 
or unknown animals, animals that we're trying to find that may be new species or species that were recently extinct and that we can rediscover. Now, among the cryptids, as we call them, the one among the, the animals that we're looking for, there's what I call the celebrity cryptids. Bigfoot, Yeti, Loch Ness Monster, and during the 18th century, it was the sea serpent. So those are the big the big names. And, of course, with uh, our changing culture, another big, big one is uh, chupacabras. So those are the ones that everybody wants to come into the museum. Everybody wants to talk about Bigfoot. But at any one time around the world, there's maybe 200 other cryptids that people are looking for and that they're actually trying to find. Now, the difference between myths and legends, myths are things that are made from human imagination, like griffins, uh, like centaurs, things like that. Those are not part of cryptozoology. Legendary creatures, such as Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, that are based on legends, that are, which are legends, of course, mean that there's some kind of fire beneath the smoke, those are what cryptozoologists are interested in. Native traditions, legends, folk art, uh, eyewitness sightings, and then we get into the physical evidence, footprints, hair samples, uh, and then things like photographs. So that's what cryptozoology is all about. A lot of people come to me and they want me to send them everything I have for their term paper. That's pretty hard to do. That's why I've written 30 books so they can read the books or go <laughs> online or even use Google. But, uh, you know, I do get those re requests every day and uh, try to help people. But it gets to be very frustrating because when I was starting uh, in 1960, there was probably five of us in the country that were interested in Bigfoot and cryptozoology. And now it's thousands upon thousands of people, cryptozoologists in training, and they see a footprint in their backyard. They don't look in animal track books. They immediately assume it's some kind of cryptid. It's probably a squirrel or a bunny rabbit, but it happens over and over again. And the chupacabras has been a major problem because the original chupacabras in 1995 in Puerto Rico were all bipedal and all had little hair on them. Right, And then it morphed when it went to Texas Next uh, Media, and it's become anything that's dog-like with four legs and doesn't have hair on it. And those are mostly dogs, coyotes, and foxes with mange. So that one area of chupacabras shows how crazy the media and the morphing of uh, cryptozoological phenomena has become, and it's really got out of hand. And that's one of the most frequent, the mainstream media get hold of me. A Christian Science Monitor finds a picture of a, of a dead animal on a road, and they call me up and they say, we think we found a chupacabra. And I say, no, you found a picture of a dead raccoon. But uh, it keeps happening, and it happens every, every spring and summer. So, and it's going to keep happening. There is an item on your website, CryptoZooNews.com. And it's called A Global Call for DNA Evidence of Cryptids. Now, I heard some time back they were trying to put that together, and it didn't quite come together. What happened? Well, I think there was a couple situations a couple of years ago. One was by a woman in Texas who was a veterinarian, and she headed a DNA lab. She tried to get hold of all of these samples of uh, Bigfoot DNA, and different people would send in a stick of a Bigfoot or a hair. And she started publishing, but she got very upset because nobody would take her paper. So she bought a journal and then published her paper and, and started saying things like uh, there was a connection 13,000 years ago and angels from heaven had mated with Bigfoot. And that was the result of what she was finding. In other words, in other words she was very discredited yeah, ouch. of what she, the results. At the same time, uh, well, a little bit later, Oxford University, through Dr. Brian Stikes, actually uh, started collecting all of the hominid samples that he could from around the world. And he actually 
that did it very scientifically and skeptically, and he actually discovered uh, out of his hundreds of samples of Yeti hair that two of them matched with a 40,000-year-old ancient polar bear strand that back then the polar bear would have been brown. And that that was kind of a, a lot of people in the media lost it. They said, Yeti is a bear, and that was the headlines. But what he really was saying and what he discovered is a, a supposedly extinct brown bear, a prehistoric brown bear that's in the branch of polar bears that are branching off, has been rediscovered. The hair samples were from 30 years ago and as recently as 2007. So we still know there's something quite exciting out there that some people are are saying, you know, as a Yeti-like creature, but the word Yeti is very global over in Nepal. All kinds of unknown creatures can be called Yeti. Where did those hair samples come from, Lauren, that that, uh, were determined to be an extinct, uh, you know, polar bear, basically? Where did they come from? The Himalayas? Well, one of them, one of them was a, a individual who was a hiker over there, an investigator, and he was he was backtracking a report that somebody had killed a yeti. He tracked down the individual that had done that in the in 1970s, got a hair sample, and sent it to Oxford University. The other one was with a uh, documentary team in the 2000s that had gone over there to. Hunt for Yeti. Yeah, gone over where, though? Are we talking the Himalayas, Tibet? What? The, Nepal. 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 Himalayas, okay. Yes. okay. Yeah, and they had found a hair sample in a tree. So these were certainly hair samples where we could track down where they were from right. uh, in Nepal and that they uh, were in 8, 800 miles apart with the samples, yet the creature exactly 100% DNA match with a jawbone. Wow of a ancient bear that was dug up in Norway. So uh, it was quite an exciting find that I think really got uh, diminished by the madness of the media. Ah, the madness of the media. <laughs> the bane of our Present existence. company excluded, of course. Well, we're not mad. <laughs> we're just completely outrageous. There's a difference. Yeah. So the new project that we're talking about, the one that's mentioned on my, uh, at my blog, we're doing, in conjunction with Oxford and uh, a documentary film team that's going to, that's where all the money's coming from, by the way. You know, nobody, none of the wealthy people or universities really fund anything. It's it's documentary film companies and television networks that are funding all of the new cryptozoology research, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. But anyway, we're gathering samples, whether they're mystery cats or Bigfoot, or uh, mystery bears from all over the world. And people are sending in some interesting things. I've I've got a sample, for instance, coming this week from France, of some fecal material that was collected in British Columbia. So uh, that's going to be interesting to look at that little Tupperware bin. uh, Well, that's that's kind of a circuitous route. Somebody brought some fecal material to Europe, and now it's coming back to the U.S.? Yes, yes, because... We're going to, they apparently, uh, it's one of the best DNA labs in the country is the one out in Oregon that the, right. the uh, U.S. wildlife people use to determine if you've... Lauren Coleman joins us. He'll have more to say about that. DNA testing with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. 
Have you ever felt like the United States government knows way too much about your financial affairs? I continue to hear stories about property seizures, frozen bank accounts, confiscation of stocks and bonds. It makes me wonder if the U.S. citizen will ever again have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unfortunately, with the Drug and Money Laundering Act, the IRS Revenue Ruling 6045 of 1984, and the Trading with the Enemy Act and Franklin D. Roosevelt's Executive Order of 1933, some precious metal holdings are subject to government intervention. For this reason, Midas Resources has prepared a report explaining the boundaries of trading precious metals privately. Whether if you have any intention of trading with Midas Resources or not, I have instructed my representatives to give this report out free. Call for your free copy at 1-800-686-2237. When investing, always proceed with caution. Again, call 1-800-686-2237. Exercise your legal right to trade metals privately. 1-800-686-2237. It's hard to imagine when things are going reasonably well, just how quickly things can change. But what would it take? Economic collapse? Massive crop failure, chemical or biological attack, so many situations could find you in the grocery looking to pick up food for your family only to find that the shelves are empty. There's nothing. Don't let that happen. Act today to make sure that if it ever comes to that, you and your family will be provided for. Visit FreezeDryGuy.com to look at the wide variety of survival foods available. Freeze-dried foods from the Freeze-Dry Guy store longer, rehydrate faster, are nutritionally superior to, and taste better than any other long-term storage food available. Visit FreezeDryGuy.com or call toll-free 866 404 6663. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So as we came to our break with Lauren Coleman, cryptozoologist extraordinaire, how do you like that? Okay, I'm just boosting his ego because he could sense to come on the show and deal with the likes of me and Chris, especially me, but seriously. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm still having a problem with the taking... Uh, what did they do when they when they arrived in France? How did they declare what they had in that Tupperware container? It's like, uh, do you have something to declare? You know, and it's like, uh, yeah, I brought some, uh, well, one of those seven dirty words back with me. And that would be a tough one to sign out a customs form for, I, I would imagine. Well, I, I don't know, because we did have some, <laughs> they wanted me to help them fill out the customs form on the way back. And I all I could say was scientific sample for analysis at the museum. Well, that's all you have to say. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. I mean, as long as it, it makes it, then uh, you don't have anything to worry about, except maybe your terminology. You fecal material and Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> probably wouldn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody would probably in customs would probably try to smoke it. Well, with the TSA, everything's going to be opened anyway, and then they can decide if they're going to right. keep it themselves or send it on. How are you progressing with the study? How many samples are you uh, you kind of having as a goal, and how many uh, have you already gathered? Well, we've got uh, a little bit under 20, which is good since, you know, nobody 
you, you just don't know whenever you put something out like that if anybody's going to send in things. But people are taking it seriously, and we have uh, a few samples from the 50s that are already in the museum from the 50s and 60s. So we've got a basis, things from the Himalayas, things from a Bigfoot out west, hair samples, orang pindek from Sumatra, uh, hair samples of one hair sample from uh, Yowie from Australia. So it's quite exciting, and then we'll see where it goes. Depends a lot on on whether or not uh, the uh, university and the documentary film company really get their their act together. We're we're waiting and we're collecting and. We show people in the museum, of course, these samples because people don't really believe that there's physical evidence of these cryptids from around the world, but there there are, and that's uh, what keeps a lot of us going. And, of course, as you may have heard, there was a brand-new animal that was discovered, and uh, a tapir, a tapir. So those are those little animals with a little prehensile nose right. uh, that was d- discovered in Brazil, and it was the fifth species of a tapir, and uh, that's a, the largest animal that's been discovered, the largest mammal that's been discovered in 35 years. Right. They also uh, discovered a a, ma- um, a primate a couple of years back, uh, the first uh, oh, yeah. America's primate, I think since the 30s or something. Oh, yeah. Well, the interesting thing uh, about the uh, tapir is that Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, had shot one, and there's been one at the American Museum of Natural History, for a hundred years, unidentified as a new species. So a lot of these things happen right under our nose, and we don't even know it. It's fascinating. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it's a big world out there, and there's lots of, especially in the aquatic uh, realm, there's lots of undiscovered species uh, in the rainforest. It's amazing that these uh, larger animals, however, uh, go for so long without being you know, actually documented and classified. Yeah, but if you don't look, you'll never find them, and that's what's been going on. A lot of uh, mainstream scientists just refuse to even consider that Bigfoot or sea serpents actually exist, and that gets them in problems when people run across these new discoveries. Now, I remember reading uh, some years back uh, about a Japanese research vessel in the Antarctic that was um, they filmed this giant kind of a white blob kind of creature. It looks kind of similar to a whale, but not really. Um, and it had some Japanese name. Do you recall that? And what do you think of um, of the possibility of, of larger aquatic animals existing in the polar and Antarctic region? Well, I, I definitely think there was a study done recently that said within the next 25 years, approximately 12 new large species will be found. You may be referring to the one where the the ship pulled up what looked like a plesiosaur, a big blob out of the ocean. That exactly. turned out to be a, a decaying basking shark. So we have to be really careful uh, and and try to make sure that things that are misidentified don't go into the literature for too long right. as a sea serpent or whatever. I'm just more and more fascinated where things can go with this. But the impression I get in just listening to you for the first part of the show, is we're talking mostly here about unknown species right here on Earth. All right. Right. Okay. Is there anything paranormal about them? I mean, a lot of people want to take Bigfoot and all these other creatures and send them into another dimension or have them emerging from a UFO. Is there any of that? Well, first of all, we have to figure out what the word paranormal means. If it means outside the normal realm, Certainly cryptozoology, uh, if you're talking to a zoologist or an anthropologist who's been teaching in a university for a long time, they will see everything that you're doing in cryptozoology as either an awful word, pseudoscience or paranormal. If you're talking to somebody that's a Fordian or within the field ourselves, here's where we have a problem because a lot of people come along, and I'm a very biologically based cryptozoologist. My main focus is to see if there's new species out there. does not mean that I exclude that there may be some other aspects of these creatures that are unexplained. For instance, is uh, Bigfoot have a highly developed sense of telepathy that has gone unused in humans? 
you could say the same question for dolphins. Are dolphins using telepathy more than humans? It's just that Bigfoot hasn't been discovered yet. So a lot of people put that on Bigfoot as maybe an attribute that they might have. Do Bigfoot drop out of UFOs? I think that's a question that is totally ridiculous to my sense of research. I don't need to pursue that. Uh, There haven't been that many reports. It's exciting for a lot of people to go in that direction. To me, it's a a dead sidetrack, a dead dead end uh, to my research. But I don't diminish people who want to look into that because I'm very open-minded that, you know, there may be a lot of answers out there. It's just not one I'm interested in and not one that I've, uh, like you noticed, you know, I've been in this field for almost uh, 54 years or over 54 years now. And uh, it's one that I pursued. Uh, Certainly with Jerry Clark, we looked into high strangeness. Bigfoots and UFOs and all of that when we, you know, were back then. And, and it was really a, it's a, a pursuit that leads nowhere. So um, if people want to do that, fine. If that's the paranormal that you're talking about, sure, you're going to get people who are interested in Mothman and they talk about Mothman and UFOs and Men in Black. And they ignore that Ivan Sanderson, John Keel, and I in the early days got the reports of Mothman, and they were all giant birds, giant owls, giant thunderbirds, whatever. They had nothing mechanical, nothing UFO-related, and nothing at all to do with giant moths. Lauren okay. Coleman joins Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. The nation's largest independently owned and operated talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. G-C-N. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bodies products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com and all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic
historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. There are many things the human body can do very well, but maintaining the proper pH level isn't always one of them. That's where AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops can make a world of difference. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps your body do what's natural. Just a few drops a day helps rid your body of harmful waste and acid while promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Alkalizing boosts your immune system and can help fight headaches, irritability, cramping, and insomnia. Alkalizing also helps the body fight depression and even bone loss. To learn more about the importance of alkalizing and how you can find life-changing and vital balance, please visit AlkaVision's brand new website at AlkaVision.com. Same great products, but now easier to use and more informative than ever before. To get your very own plasma pH drops for just $29.95, call 800-518-7615 or visit AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Alkalize your body and supercharge your health at the new AlkaVision.com. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned into the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? So basically, there was nothing weird or unusual about the Mothman, Lauren Coleman. So what were the Mothman prophecies all about in that book from John Keel? First, we have to start with, why was it called Mothman? It was called Mothman because a newspaper copy editor in Ohio was a fan of the Batman series on TV. Oh. He was, ti- he was tired of people calling it the Big Bird in the newspapers. He wanted a new headline, so he called it Mothman, and it stuck. So you have the song Long- Mothman, Mothman. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have John Keel, who's uh, not a ufologist in his own words, he calls himself a demonologist. John Keogh comes along as a demonologist. He wants to look for the creepy underpinnings of, of this situation. And you got to remember uh, Truman Capote and, and um, you know, the, the whole notion of a crime novel. John Keogh kind of took the same notion with the Mothman Prophecies, which was not his name. It was the Saturday Review his publisher gave it that name. Uh, the Mothman prophecies, really all it meant was that he thought there was a banshee-like element to the Mothman and it may have predicted the collapse of the bridge. But that's not what John was really after. He was just trying to mix together Mount Misery in New York, the Mothman, what his psychics were telling him, and try to come up with a good story, a good, chilling story. And that's what he did. His book is brilliant. Um, But it wasn't anything to do with uh, cryptozoology or or really even looking at ufology. He was just trying to make it into a creepy story. Well, how much of that story do you think was real and how much was fabricated and and just part of his his writing style and... uh, dramatic content, let's say, to to jazz things up? I mean, how much of it was real, do you think? I think that you've got to look at what he did with his stories. You know, the the uh, Woody story where the creature's seen on the road and... Uh, Dernberger? Cole, yeah, all and of Indrid the... And Indrid Cole? Indrid Cole and the, um, the telephone calls to his room. And John Keel just took all of that and put it in a blender. And... His writing style makes people reading that think that all is interlinked, that all came cause and effect, is all related to each other. And I think that there may have been separate incidents. You know, some people that were olive complexion showed up in town. There may have been uh, our Air Force officers around investigating stuff like this. Even if you start breaking it down, the Mothman sightings happened in the fall and in the spring. You had the waves of UFO sightings. Separately, he started hearing about cattle mutilations. Separately, he started hearing about Bigfoot reports. But John mixed it all together because that's what John did. So is it truth? Is it fiction? Is it fictionalized truth? 
I certainly think it's someplace in between, and maybe 60% of it, if you boiled it down, you could find was factual. But I think a lot of it looks like it's more than it is because of John Keel. So he turned all this into a very mystical thing. It became one of his better-selling books, and he even got it made into a movie. Yeah, and I uh, congratulate him for that. I was I was friendly with him all the way up to his death. I don't diminish anything he did. Uh, he got to be a crusty old guy who hated us all, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> if you look at that, that uh, edition that he put in the, the tour book whenever the movie came out, he hated everybody, but that's that's what happens sometimes. Well, well, he was he was the ultimate trickster in many ways. Oh yeah, yeah. That's kind of unfortunate, though, that he was so bitter about things. Well, he felt that, except for the movie, and he really didn't make that much off the movie. That he'd done all of this work, and that all of these people came after him, standing on his shoulders. Lots of people didn't give him credit. A lot of people really didn't like him. And, uh, you know, he got to be bitter at the end of his life and and very poor, uh, actually, and and living among uh, everything that he ate. He would just drop on the floor. I mean, his his house at the end of his life was, you know, something for hoarders. So it got to be very, very sad, actually. It sure sounds like it. That's yeah. so unfortunate. I know we tried to get him on the Paracast, and it was his last year or two of life, and I think at this point he was quite sick, unable to do so. But when we had yeah. someone call him on the phone, I don't mm-hmm. know if the conversation was concluded or not, but we got his <laughs> phone number from Tim Beckley, I believe, and he called Beckley back screaming at him, how dare you let those people call me? <laughs> well, I had him yeah. agree to do a conference uh, the weekend before 9-11 down oh, yeah, in Palenque, right. Mexico, of all places. Mm-hmm. That was uh, the back back a few years, but uh, he was still pretty chipper. He, he said, are you sure you want me down there? You know, if I come down there, you'll end up in jail. And I said, well, what do you mean, John? He goes, I'll, I'll, get, I'll definitely get you in trouble. And I said, bring it on. <laughs> so we unfortunately, because of... Uh, you know, nine, it was actually the weekend after 9-11, and uh, we ended up having to cancel. Mm-hmm. But, oh well. <laughs> Robert Anton Wilson laughed at us when I called, and he goes, he says, I have a hard enough time just getting down the, down the hallway. So, Right. right. But, uh, well, well, Lauren, how about you? Uh, are you still going out and doing speaking engagements? And uh, if you're asked by a TV show to maybe travel somewhere, or are you willing to do that? Or you just pretty much kind of sticking at uh, headquarters there? Oh, no, I travel extensively. I, yeah. You know, I, I've i given up on doing free things because it's, oh, God, you know, yeah. people want you to come there and they speak and they don't want to pay your travel. And so it's interesting. I've kind of got into the last couple of years some of the places that can afford you are casinos, amazingly. So I, I've been to Michigan. I've been to Florida. I've been to, you know, all around. But the other thing is, of course, with the museum in Portland, Maine. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, That's a lot English, of responsibility. English, Spanish, Italian, Irish film crews come over to interview me in the museum because there's incredible amounts of uh, artifacts there for the B-roll. So I do both. I do both. But I've. I've traveled quite a bit. There's a big Ohio conference on Bigfoot that I spoke at in 2013 and 2011. I uh, gave a keynote at a Bucky Fuller conference in Southern Illinois in 2011. So I, I traveled quite a bit, and I've got a few things coming up in Atlanta and, and um, up in Minnesota this fall. So, uh, you know, I, I like to travel. I like to to get out there and meet people, but I also, whenever I go to a conference, I usually try to build in one or two days to reinvestigate right. old cases or new cases, so that's always fun. Yeah, that's important to really maximize these trips and really uh, get several several irons in the fire. That's what I try to do as well. Well, we're about ready to go to another break, but when we come back, I'd really like to 
to get your take on on the direction that Hollywood has taken uh, these subjects, especially uh, with emphasis on the the Bigfoot shows and some of the monster shows that have been on here the last few years. And we'd love to get your take on that. And also your suggestions on how to make these shows more compelling in a real sense, not a dramatic sort of reality show sense. I know that's a big question, sure. but... <laughs> this is certainly right. something we're going to want to ask in our next segment because we have about 30 seconds or 40 seconds. The key being here, of course, is that a lot of these reality shows are not reality in any sense of the word. And, of course, we have the experience of some of those UFO-oriented shows where they do pretty wacky things, like Hangar One, the one that's connected with MUFON. Of course, the infamous, did I say infamous, chasing UFOs, of which James Fox was a participant. And boy, did he tell us things about that one, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have Lauren Coleman, premier cryptozoologist, and more with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> We are the premier independent talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. G-C-N. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TechNightOwl for a special discount. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Text GCN Live to 22828 or click on the banner at GCNlive.com. Enter by May 15th. You'll qualify to win a six-month supply of storable food from MyPatriotSupply.com. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Harvest Right is the world's first in-home freeze dryer. Freeze dry your own fruits, vegetables, meats, and full meals. With Harvest Right, you can prepare foods that last 25 years, preserving its freshness, nutrition, color, and taste. All your food can be freeze dried. So don't throw away your leftovers. Freeze dry them with this incredible in-home money-saving freeze dryer. Go to HarvestRight.com to see how the Harvest Right freeze dryer works. That's HarvestRight.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV a little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there. 
and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. Hi, my name is Richard Dolan. You're listening to The Paracast. On the Paracast with Gene and Chris, premier cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman is with us. And we're really just glad he took the time away from his busy schedule to spend a little time with us. Now, Chris was talking about the reality show syndrome, as I was in the previous segment. you have some response to that, Lauren? Well, first of all, let me pick up on the James Fox situation. I actually was just sent out to California uh, Tracy Tremaine and uh, James Fox is doing this new movie, 701. Uh, are you aware of that? Yes, uh, we talked about it two weeks, two ago. weeks ago. And I'm the out of the 40 people they're interviewing, I'm the only cryptozoologist they interviewed because, of course, some of our cases are unexplained, too. I think that kind of approach where you do recreations, you interview people, and you try to keep grounded in reality is something I'd like to see going from the documentary realm, a full-length feature, to more television. The old In Search Of was kind of exciting because a lot of people hadn't seen any of them explained before and, uh, you know, had a narrator we all knew and liked. And then they would go out in the field and they'd look around and they'd interview witnesses and different things like that. What we've seen come along, of course, is something like Bigfoot Bounty, which was a combination of finding Bigfoot plus survivors, where you had people try to, you know, they were voted off and different things like that. Uh, All of this is really scripted reality fiction in many ways. Uh, Finding Bigfoot, I I like the people on there, I know them, uh, and yet there's a formula. I was a consultant for four years uh, for Monster Quest, and one of my big complaints is that they didn't go further afield. They went back to things like giant snakes and big rats, which had nothing to do with cryptozoology, because their uh, marketing research said that people were interested in that. Of course, they started doing some of that stuff, and then they got canceled. Uh, Destination Truth is off the air. And they tried to do a combination of hauntings and um, and kind of cryptozoology investigations, trying to really take on the uh, ghost hunter sort of notion. So nobody's really come up with a good formula yet, uh, three years, four years segments for these uh, shows seem to be it. But what's amazing is despite how critical any of us can be of, of any of these programs, it gets new people interested. I uh, At the museum, I see literally scores and scores of kids, parents, teachers coming in that their major new experience with Bigfoot is finding Bigfoot. And they start asking intelligent questions. They start reading deeper books about it. They start being skeptical but open-minded. They kind of giggle about the show, but they're interested in the subject. And so that seems to be the key. These yeah, shows are there's opening, hope. They're opening up new avenues of uh, new people getting into the field. Yeah, there's hope. That's that's really a good sign. I'm really glad you pointed that out. Kids are a lot more on the ball and intelligent than I think some adults uh, would care to admit. I know I was when I was a kid. And, and it's important that kids can differentiate between pure entertainment, and the real scientific reality behind a particular mysterious subject like this. And it's good to see that these shows are at least bringing forward some people that have have good heads on their shoulders. Right. But uh, Finding Bigfoot, a lot of people watch it because the same reason they slow down on the highway when there's a wreck. You know, um, (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh boy, so, you said it. We did. So, yeah, no, no. So there's some. No, yeah, there is a fascination like uh, factor. I'm sure it's oh, entertaining. Yeah, Matt Moneymaker, Matt Moneymaker yells at people, and everybody loves to watch that. Because, yeah, and that makes good TV. You know, you have to have drama for good TV. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Hangar One, this recent show that's been on uh, a few weeks uh, that has MUFON stamp of approval is is kind of garnering some grumblings, I think, uh, among the Paracast listeners and others out there that uh, they're, they're being kind of fast and loose with some of the affiliations uh, that MUFON may have had with, with specific cases and how valid they were to even bring up uh, to begin with. And uh, I just hope we don't see a trend of putting official stamps of approval on questionable editorial decisions and questionable production decisions. You know, what I'm hoping is that people get more and more intelligent about what they're watching. I mean, I, I've i been on a lot of programs. I was on Lost Tapes, which a lot of people thought was uh, nonfiction. It was pure fiction. Uh, and you get taped in an interview and you say something like, I'm very interested in this creature, but it's not an alien. Oh, well, they'll cut out the, in the editing, in the post-production, they'll edit it's out. called Franken-quoting. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yes, I was even on uh, ancient, ancient Aliens about the Montauk Monster, which, of course, they wanted to make into something from outer space. And I, I kept saying, no, we know that was a raccoon that lost its hair. I, you know, I didn't make him too happy, but I got up partially on the show. So uh, I actually taught a documentary film course for 14 years, and people would come back years later and say, that's the best course I ever had because I never watched the news the same way. I now know that they're actually editing those people to say what they want them to say. Right. And, Chris, didn't you, you go on a show where, I think it was UFO Hunters? Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theory, they, they took... Uh, they took uh, two quotes that I, I, I made and gave them the reverse uh, treatment so that I was, instead of saying, I don't think it was something, they were saying, I thought it was something. And then UFO hunters took a whole bunch of data that I was asked to recite about some of my, my particular theories about hotspot areas. And, and I was referring to my, my research uh, in Colorado, and they made it sound like I was talking about Sedona, Arizona, where we were actually doing the filming. You know, that's that's a problem with Hollywood. They do play fast and loose uh, at times. And, and it's these senior editing people who are the liaison between the production company and uh, the project and then kind of a linchpin between the network or, or channel that the programming is on that's beholden to the advertisers. And so there is kind of a, a tightrope act that many of these guys do. And then you have the outright mercenaries uh, like Bob Kiviot helping uh, – you know, put on the uh, Ray Santilli, uh, you know, alien autopsy uh, fiasco. And uh, he's, he's still very proud of that. He, he thought that was one of his most successful things that he's ever done. Uh, so there's a certain mindset. You and I, Lauren and Gene, we're interested in getting to the truth. Uh, when you talk to somebody who's really entrenched in Hollywood, they're interested in, in, in entertaining people, number one, and also being beholden and uh, agreeable uh, by the advertisers and people that are putting the money up for these shows. Right. Yeah, Bob did uh, both sides of the Bigfoot. He, he came out saying that Patterson film was the greatest piece of evidence, and then he did a show showing that it was a hoax. So he likes to do <laughs> anything to get ratings and money. Jeez. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, he'll take any side as long as there's a paycheck. Yeah. What side do you want me to take, folks? Okay, I will do that. Well, that's why I use the word mercenary. Right. Well, there are other words, but then we do get to the seven dirty ones very close, at least. Well, okay. I'm, I'm not going to slag anybody. I think Bob's a nice guy. I worked with him years ago, 20 years ago, when he was with the show Encounters, and he actually did a very good job on the segment we worked on together. But, you know, again, it's all in your motivations. If, your motive, if the motive pure and the means correct, then you're doing the right thing in my book. He was on with Don Ecker on the Paracast, and he was one of the few guests I had on who I wanted to just smack in the face. He was wow. so overbearing. I think that's part of it. His manner was extremely overbearing, and you're trying to have a sensible discussion, and he wanted to be, I'm the big know-it-all. I know everything. And, you know, you have to temper things a little bit here no. because nobody knows everything, obviously. And in this field, the thing I think that separates the Paracast from the others is we don't think the answers are already available. 
You know? That's one of the big things. I, I got a wonderful opportunity um, on the new In Search of series to be the senior series consultant and got to work with Alan Landsberg. And he actually was the opposite. He was very open to suggestions, uh, very open to other people's idea, and not at all arrogant for a guy who put together one of the best series in the oh, ever you know, in search of. Yeah, ever. yeah and, the uh, preeminent show. It was the X-Files of its time. Right. And so there are some people out there, a lot of producers and directors that are good people, but a lot of them really are so full of themselves and do think that Hollywood is the center of the universe. Yeah. Well, and a lot of them are just not up to speed in the subject matter. They're trying to get, you know, researchers uh, 23, 24, just out of film school, say, go go research this subject. And they dive into the pool not knowing how to swim. And, so <laughs> and they there's... sink on the way. Listen, we do the break now with Lauren Coleman joining Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> largest independently owned communications network GCN If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Contact me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. M-B-R-O-W-E-R at GCNlive.com. That's mbrower at GCNlive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Heart and Body Extract continues to receive positive testimonials from people who have experienced amazing results, like Reed. I just wanted to send you a quick but a very big thank you for Heart and Body Extract. I've been on the formula for nearly a month now, and the improvement in the circulation of my legs has been simply amazing. Reed was facing a tough choice. I was facing surgery due to the severity of the 100% blocked arteries in both my legs. In my decision, waiting for surgery to say no and try heart and body extract instead has been thankfully the right decision. And the result? I can now walk up steps without noticeable pain. Order heart and body extract at 866-295-5305. 866-295-5305. Or hbextract.com. Heart and body extract for a long and healthy life. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. The last four segments of our visit with Lauren Coleman. We do have a number of questions from our listeners, and maybe if we're going to clean up a few of the topics here and get to those questions. Chris? Great, great. This is called vamping, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the great techniques for the age-old broadcasters when not everybody has the cue card set because we don't use cue cards on the Paracast. Some people think, you know, we have extensive notes and we read from them and no. You've got to be prepared to sink or swim on this kind of show because if you don't, there is not going to be a show. You know, like I learned, and I don't want to say who the guest co-host was. One of our guest co-hosts, he'd have somebody else feed him questions before going on the Paracast. So he'd have the questions in readiness. He didn't do his own research. Chris, speaking of questions. Okay, uh, I've got uh, quite a number here. Actually, Lauren, you're, I think you'll, you'll enjoy a lot of them. This one comes from Wade Ridsdale, who's one of our uh, really active uh, posters at forum.theparacast.com. His first question is, are there any plans for a sequel to The Copycat Effect? Yes, I've actually already signed a book contract uh, probably for about three years from now uh, on the Twilight language. 
and I'm going to go in depth uh, about that and look at some different things about coincidence and synchronicity. Yeah, uh, really meantime, important topics. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the reason it's a uh, couple, four years away is I I did a two book deal, and I'm going to be writing a new cryptozoology book in the meantime. Wow. Well, keep him busy. He has a follow-up question about uh, Twilight Language, uh, that aspect. And he asked, given all the news stories that must come across your de desk, how do you pick which ones to post on Twilight Language? And do you have any parameters or filters in place? Well, one of the first filters is how busy and how I'm feeling and if I'm traveling or not. I, I read the news every day. I, I get Twitter feeds. I get breaking news feeds. I see all of those. There are some news stories that come to the sort of boil to the top. Uh, I've always been very interested in the harmonic use of, of what I call the name game. And so, you know, if there's stories on school shootings or assassination or uh, some kind of large event that's affecting a lot of people, uh, I talk about that in my blog. For instance, the mystery disappearance of the plane I thought very much synced up with a lot of things that Ivan Sanderson did on the Vial Vorky uh, and really put to emphasis a spot, a sort of a triangle of, of missing planes and missing ships off of Australia. And I predicted long before they looked in that area that that was going to be where they would end up looking. And that's because of Ivan Sanderson. So I fully credit other people, other Fordians, but I'm also kind of looking at any the Fayette factor, for instance. That's a Jim Brandon thing from uh, the Rebirth of Pan and uh, right. Weird America. Weird so America. I look for different things like that. Yeah, some great books, some great old ideas that I think are not uh, worth putting on the shelf, but kind of renewing. Right. Well, that that brings up the whole subject of synchronicities and coincidences again. And Wade has another follow up question. He he. he kind of points out if one looks hard enough, one can find connections, however tenuous, all about us. Do you ever find yourself holding off on a story because any of the connections are a bit of a reach? Well, I think I'm very careful about that. I, I certainly know that uh, awareness is, is everything. You, you can kind of look and find things. One thing that does, for instance, whenever the Aurora shooting occurred, I think uh, the reflective factor is certainly there, and a lot of a lot of things like uh, having another shooting and finding out that the the shooter lives on Home Street, which was the name of the shooter in Aurora, or that it was happening in Lafayette, or that it happened in Aurora, another Aurora, Illinois, or something like that. Those kinds of things, as opposed to feeling like the more you can look, you can find them. It was I was looking for them, and they kept popping up. Uh, so I wanted to kind of acknowledge that and respect that and then write about it. Right. Well, one one that I know uh, you from is the Mothman uh, correlations with names, the name game thing. Has, I, oh, yeah. I haven't heard much word about that lately. Uh, why don't you give our new listeners a thumbnail sketch of that particular scenario? Well, there was a lot of, a lot of things. And of course, it's Mason County and a lot of the Masonic, harmonic Masonic stuff. And, of course... The thing I haven't even written up, I'm kind of holding for the, the future book, is that if you look at the, the actual origins of the name of Point Pleasant and the battle there and the fighting there, it really all goes back, and um, it happens to be connected to the map room in which Obama had to take his second swearing in after he was uh, first elected. So I found that very interesting that a lot of uh, a lot of the connections to the Mothman prophecies and the Mothman and the Point Pleasant just keep on showing up in a lot of political situations. Wow, I'd never heard that one about uh, the map room. Why did he have to no, go back but, and 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 redo uh, his uh, pledge? Because when Robert swore him in, he incorrectly used the wrong words, so they had to re-swear him in. In the map room that same day. Interesting. Yeah. Here's another one from Wade, uh, kind of shifting gears a little here. Do you think that the copycat effect is a byproduct of the advent of news saturation, 
Or could you date its conception? Let's say he asked, did Jack the Ripper cases spawn its own imitators? Actually, uh, in my book, The Copycat Effect, I talk about the Jack the Ripper had many copycats. And I document that, that uh, the copycat effect was spread during the Jack the Ripper times because of this new invention called the telegraph. Uh, it's very much related to the media that's in effect at the time. So when the telegraph came into effect, you had a whole wave of copycats because these um, Jack the Ripper became like dime novels and big stories. So the advent of both cluster suicides and then school shootings came about right at the time when CNN came into being and then Fox News and MSNBC, who needed wall-to-wall stories. And they went crazy with the wall-to-wall stories of these school shootings, which then caused imitators. That's scary when uh, <laughs> when you see life imitating art, li- Im- imitating life or something. It's uh, it-, it gets a little disturbing. Well, I'm Here's- going to ask a general question then, which kind of follows this. Do you think our obsession with so-called serial killers basically creates people doing that? I mean, you have TV shows like Criminal Minds that are so popular, and also I the following... Yeah, I think we certainly have to be careful. And and my book is full of examples where people have taken programs back in the day when there was VHS and they'd put their their tape in and they'd be watching it for hours and hours. And then they'd go out and shoot up a a McDonald's or, uh, you know, different movies about the Russian roulette, Deer Hunter. The deer hunter was shown so many times in so many different places and a direct correlation between the people that would watch that movie and then go do it. So, uh, you know, I am somewhat concerned we are living in a culture of violence in America, you know, after the, all of the stabbings that happened, if you, you had more stabbing. So it's not just the guns. It's, it's whatever you put in people's hands. They'll take it if it's, it's publicized in front of them. It's a real choice thing. It's vulnerable, emotionally disturbed people who are shown these visual images, these graphic images, and then they uh, feel that's the choice for them. Uh, It used to be that people would go out and kill themselves, and it's only really been in the last 25 years where people decided to take other people with them. That's when you got the mass shootings, workplace violence, Uh, the mall shootings, the school shootings, that very much can be tracked down and tracked back to some specific incidents, uh, which I document in the book, of course. We have Lauren Coleman joining us. We are segueing a little bit into some other subjects, but we have a lot to talk about with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two. A2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7, 365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? 
These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Hi, this is Steve Sanchez, and based on a recent study, it was found that 57 million Americans had legal issues over the last 12 months, but only 60% of those studied sought out the services of a lawyer. Why? In a nutshell, affordability. While my friends at Legal Shield have created a solution that can help you not if, but when you need an attorney. For as little as $17 per month, Legal Shield will provide you unlimited access to qualified attorneys at an accomplished law firm for advice and counsel on legal issues no matter how serious or trivial. For over 40 years and with 1.4 million families across North America, Legal Shield can help you, the loyal GCN listener. Representatives are standing by now to answer your questions, so call them now at 1-855-340-SAVE. That's 1-855-340-7283 or visit them at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Results will vary from case to case. If you're worried about your health and you're tired of the nasty side effects of harsh drugs or antibiotics, then look no further. Supernatural Silver is the answer. Supernatural Silver is a powerful immune system enhancer that can be used every day to help keep you healthy and well with none of those nasty side effects. It's extremely safe for use internally as well as topically. And Supernatural Silver is hundreds of times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. It is perfect for use in the sinuses, eyes, ears, and on any wound or skin issue. Supernatural Silver is also extremely effective when taken orally and can help fight off bacteria, viruses, and mold that may be overwhelming your immune system. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER Silver 2014 for 20% off of your entire order and give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. With Gene and Chris and the Paracast, just a fast question about the subject of serial killers. Do you think this rather ongoing issue of gun control is going to impact that? Do you think that better gun control laws could reduce the possibility of some nut getting a hold of the weapons he or she needs, or it doesn't matter? I'm very much uh, for looking at the direct correlation. You have countries that have banned guns. Sure, individuals will freak out, get a gun from a gun club, and but the frequency of gun killings is so much less there. In America, you know, from the Wild West, you have people who turn to guns to kill other people, to kill their lovers, and it's going to keep increasing until people look at that. I mean, why you have to have assault weapons that you can take into a school and take out 20 kids is just beyond me. Uh, even the, and then people, of course, point to the Chinese that have the uh, the school stabbings, but those stabbings don't kill 20 kids. They might injure the kids. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not for putting knives in everybody's hands either, but we've got to be realistic. Uh, if you have a culture that has guns, then there are people that are going to use them. You know, what bothers me is the number of people who were hurt because of accidents. A weapon goes off because they didn't know how to use it. And I think if you're going to have wide availability of weapons. I mean, if you drive a car, which is a weapon, it's a three or 4,000 pound weapon or even larger. If you're going to have a deadly weapon in your hands, shouldn't there be some minimum requirement to educate yourself on how to use it safely? Exactly. And 
I did trainings all across the state of um, Maine for nine years on suicide prevention. One of the things that we would often ask the 40 or so people there is, do you own a gun? Yes. Do you lock it up? Yes. Do your kids know where that key is? Yes. And there's a lot of hunter education, but there's a lot of stupidity too. There's a lot of uh, people just not going the extra step that if they have a suicidal kid or a kid that's emotionally disturbed in their house, they still have those things in their house that can be used against them or against other people. And so the logic and thinking behind a lot of gun owners is just not there in my my view of what's going on. And I know I, I upset some people by saying it straight, but I think that uh, you just got to really do more than education. You got to kind of legislate, I think, against some of these guns that people really don't need to own. Yeah, I, I remember hearing years ago uh, a very startling statistic that claimed that for every Texan, there's seven uh, weapons, <laughs> firearms. That's kind of scary. I, I was I was at a conference, in, a Bigfoot conference in um, in Texas a couple of years ago, and I was in one of the tables signing my books, and everybody started talking around all the vendor tables. And they all started comparing how many guns they had ripped out. <laughs> so it's just amazing. <laughs> well, a well-armed populace uh, gives the uh, powers of be a, a pause sometimes. But, uh, yeah, there's <laughs> for every 10 people that are on the ball, educated, safe, there's always that one Yahoo who's uh, kind of ruined it for everybody else. And that's unfortunate. But, hey, it's human nature. When you have 300-plus million people – there's a sizable percentage of them that uh, should not have any access to firearms and not because of a criminal past, but because of, you know, psychological and emotional issues. I, I had an incident yeah. that happened right across the street from me here, and, and it's hor horrific, uh, mm -hmm. some of the things that you read about. That's why I don't watch <laughs> your mainstream media as, as a rule. Let's uh, shift gears uh, here to another subject that you might be able to help with. This is from Trickster Terrestrial. And uh, he's a brand new sign up uh, at the forum here at forum.theparacast.com. And he has a very simple question. He says, I just moved to Oregon. And where are good places to camp and investigate cryptids in the Pacific Northwest? There's a good one. Right. Well, in general, uh, there's a thing called the Oregon Caves that a lot of people do a lot of uh, investigating of Bigfoot sightings. In my book, uh, Bigfoot, The True Story of Apes in America, I did a whole list at the back of that book of 20 different places around the country that are, right. have a high concentration of Bigfoot sightings. Or a lot of people go to an area they want to find Bigfoot, but they also want to be entertained a little bit. So they, they're looking for a, a nearby museum or a gift store or a sign on a highway like in Colorado. There's that uh, sign on the way to Pikes Peak that says uh, Bigfoot Crossing. A lot of people like to have their picture taken next right. to that. So I point, point a lot of those things out that really do um, are associated with high Bigfoot areas. Yeah. And that is anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, uh, up and down the Cascades, is, is as likely a place as any. Obviously, there oh, are exactly. places where, where more sightings are, are, are uh are supposedly reported from, uh, but but again, yeah, just um, network with some of the local groups there, at Trickster Terrestrial, and I'm sure some of the locals there would be able to really also steer you in the right direction for uh, more current locations, possibly. Uh, I know there have been a couple of interesting footprint cases um, in Oregon recently. Okay, and the here's other thing is to not not get in a rut. You know, really find your own areas too. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, this kind of brings us to, uh, you know, s uh, some questions that you've already answered by um, posted by Psychedelic Alchemist, um, who's a poster at forum.theparacast.com. But again, he um, he didn't, uh, I don't think, get an answer to this question. What do you think is the single most convincing piece of evidence for the existence of Bigfoot? Now, we did talk about the DNA studies and, and the like, but, but out of all the evidence, the physical evidence that we have that we can scientifically test, what, what do you think is the best one? Well, I think I'm going to have to return again to something I've written quite a bit about, which is the Patterson-Gimlin film. Because if you look at the whole 
Patterson Gimlin incident that happened at Bluff Creek, California. Right. On the October famous 20th. footage. Yeah. If you look at it and look at it from the side of it as if it's a pancake, you have a situation where the horses reacted to a smell that one of the horses actually kicked up, that the men saw something, that they actually took pictures of it, that they uh, looked on the ground and found footprints, that actually in that area it's a, a high native traditions area, that actually in 1958 there have been other tracks found there and in the area. So as far as a gold standard for a piece of evidence, I would say the whole Patterson-Gimlin situation where you have multiple layers of evidence all kind of coming together right. in a film that really has not been able to be claimed to be a hoax. Uh, it's been analyzed. You can see mu muscle movement under the fur. There seems to be herniation in some of the, the leg muscles. Uh, I've talked to Bob Gimlin many, many times. Uh, he's a credible, down-to-earth guy that doesn't seem to have been involved in a hoax at all. So I'm convinced that that's sort of the Zapruder film of Bigfoot study. Well, right. And, and it's really the best piece of evidence. Let's do the break here, guys, with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. A little right, a little left, but always independent minded. The Genesis Communications Network, GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E-Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E-Soft.com. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the total transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. 
There are many things the human body can do very well, but maintaining the proper pH level isn't always one of them. That's where AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops can make a world of difference. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps your body do what's natural. Just a few drops a day helps rid your body of harmful waste and acid while promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Alkalizing boosts your immune system and can help fight headaches, irritability, cramping, and insomnia. Alkalizing also helps the body fight depression and even bone loss. To learn more, more about the importance of alkalizing and how you can find life-changing and vital balance, please visit AlkaVision's brand new website at AlkaVision.com. Same great products, but now easier to use and more informative than ever before. To get your very own plasma pH drops for just $29.95, call 800-518-7615 or visit AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Alkalize your body and supercharge your health at the new AlkaVision.com. Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. On the Paracast with Gene and Chris, we have Lauren Coleman. He's answering your questions. And before we go on with the next question, Lauren, do you have any more to say, or do you want to have Chris go to question behind the wall? No, let's go to the next question. Um, Behind the wall, I like that. (laughs) Well, Lauren, we were just talking about the the Patterson-Gimlin film of the Bluff Creek Bigfoot, and you were saying it's the Zapruder film of of Bigfoot research, and and I I would agree. I think think it does stand up uh, over time. Here's a question from Dave M., however, who's a poster at perform.theparacast.com. And he wonders, does Lauren think there are any compelling modern videos showing Bigfoot? If so, which ones? Now, the Gimlin footage obviously was was actual film footage. But how about now with all these Bigfoot videos coming out? And uh, and after you, after you talk about that, some of the audio recordings of s- supposed Bigfoot calls, for instance, uh, are, are there any out there that you've seen recently that uh, that kind of pique your curiosity? In terms of uh, videos, uh, a lot of people – scratch their head over the Memorial Day video where something's running along a, a ridge. There's also the uh, Redwoods video where it looks like a Bigfoot is with an erection is moving in front of a van. Uh, a lot of those have questions about them, but they're just, they don't hold a candle to the Roger Patterson right. uh, Gimlin film, so nobody can really. Almost all of the ones that we've seen on YouTube are hoaxes or really uh, bad quality. Yeah, as blobs, far as audio, watches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. As far as audio, uh, of course, nothing compares to what are called the Sierra sounds from the 70s. Uh, and here, once again, it's uh, connected a lot to the individuals that took it, took those uh, audio tapes where they had actually strung uh, microphones with old reel-to-reels between a cabin and uh, something that was up the hill, a kind of structure that was up the hill. And uh, those people, of course, are getting old and they're um, passing away. And and you hear of new audio tapes, but they in some ways sound like they're gorilla roars from Tarzan movies. So it's not as good as some of the old stuff so far. No. Yeah. Here's one from Flatwoods. Interesting name. He has a picture of a drawing of the Flatwoods monster, I think, on his as his avatar photo. He, he wonders: are uh, there are isolated cases of humans growing to extreme height and weight due to acromegalia, is that mag- me- right. and other rare conditions? Do you think it's possible that sporadic cases of gigantism in animals may account for? He says a majority of crypto cases. Well, it, maybe even some crypto cases. No, uh, we really thoroughly looked at a lot of that as well as the whole notion that Bigfoot and some of the cryptids are nothing more than feral humans. And it really just doesn't uh, pan out. What you find over and over again in a lot of the cryptids is you have patterns that go on for decades of either footprints or sightings or descriptions. And what he's really talking about is a genetic or um, endocrine condition that you would see very sporadic and not at all coming across in the population. Wow. 
Yeah, so the short answer is no, and that's why. Uh, that makes sense to me. Although there are are some, I think, what do they call Almasty or Wildman reports from Siberia that are intriguing. Uh, in the past, maybe feral human type reports of smaller uh, than your average Bigfoot sized uh, humanoids. Um, right, unless you're a Russian, the Russians believe all of those are surviving Neanderthal. So. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, maybe one of those became Putin. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gene, <laughs> that, that was bad. That was really bad. Riding around on a horse with no shirt on, right? Yeah. He's not all hairy. No, he's He not. shaved he it. shaves all the hair off his body. <laughs> oh, I don't want to hear that. Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one. Um, J.C. Johnson, one of our more colorful guests that we've had on the show in the past. He, Boy, I'll tell you, he can weave a fireside story like nobody's business. Uh, JC uh, is, in his estimation, a very serious uh, cryptologist, and, and he does go out and, and interview people, and and he does uh, do field work. And one of the things that he has uncovered, going back, I think, into the 60s uh, and, and possibly earlier, are reports of s- small, very quick uh, bipedal dinosaurs in the Four Corners area. And uh, we had recent reports a year ago, October, uh, two reports from Canyonlands in Utah. Uh, there have been reports, uh, according to J.C., along the San Juan River. Do you think it's possible that dinosaurs uh, in some form still exist on the planet? I, I think it might be a stretch. I'm very aware of those reports that uh, Johnson's talking about and a few other people who have investigated. I've not personally been able to investigate them or even talk to an eyewitness, but certainly Ivan Sanderson thought that there was a, a small bipedal a dinosaur that might still exist. And, of course, we have Mokelia Mbembe reports from Africa, which right. may be mammals, uh, not so much dinosaurs. But it is a possibility, and we certainly know that we have dinosaurs that are still alive, and we call them birds. Uh, so we certainly know that, uh, that, that just because these things are around us with feathers uh, aren't really recognized as dinosaurs, maybe there's other kinds of dinosaurs around us that don't have feathers. Yeah, well, birds would be the obvious uh, existing vestige of dinosaurs. They probably did evolve into birds. Uh, I think science has pretty much determined that. Oh, um, yeah. Here's an interesting question here. Uh, do you think – the question is from um, as uh, 7092 at forum.theparacast.com. And his question just reads simply, do you think Sasquatch has real high intelligence or could they just be giant apes? Um, let me kind of amplify that and say we were talking about possible uh, telepathy abilities. There are cases, for instance, where where you have several uh, footprints from a Bigfoot and they, they appear out of nowhere and they disappear into nowhere. Uh, my, my brother actually was involved in a, in a sighting with physical evidence like that. Do you think that they do have some level of high intelligence or that possibly they have – uh, an ability to manipulate their reality somehow, uh, uh, appearing and disappearing, teleporting, for instance? Uh, well, let me back up. Um, I think I always try to ask myself the question, are humans intelligent? Um, oh, because, boy. <laughs> because anybody That's a loaded that question, me, Lauren. Well, anybody that asks me, do I think that Bigfoot uh, is a giant ape or are they something else? Well, humans are giant apes. Humans are giant apes. Bigfoot's are giant. Bigfoot are giant apes. Uh, do we have any kind of telepathy? Do we have uh, any kind of abilities to teleport? There are certain people, of course, that have psychokinetic abilities, or at least they say they do. Why would we think that another large ape may or may not have that ability? I think this is a, a realm that has not been fully explored with an open mind no. about humans. It's hard enough to talk about a creature that we don't even know if it exists to really get into yeah. bringing on all of these attributes that seem to be beyond what we even can figure out about humans. So I think it's a, a real quicksand area to get Cart into. Cart before the horse. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's discover the animal and then figure First, out. and then figure out what its capabilities are. Yeah. Exactly. 
I think well, there's it, some people here, though, who would rather object to calling humans giant apes, don't you think? Yeah, well, I know, but I've met those people. They're usually ape-like. <laughs> no, oh, I'm boy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I really am one of those people that think we are a naked ape. We yeah. are a highly evolved ape with consciousness, with the belief in God, with all of those kinds of things. But basically, we are just an ape. Um one that has uh, that we think we put ourselves above animals and above other anthropoids, but we are nothing more than an ape. Yeah. So basically, a giant ape with an ego problem. We have Lauren Coleman who has no ego problem. Gene and Chris don't either. You're in ooh, 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 oh, the Paracast. <laughs> Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Text GCN Live to 22828 or click on the banner at GCNlive.com. Enter by May 15th. You'll qualify to win a six-month supply of storable food from MyPatriotSupply.com. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Mother's Day is right around the corner. If you haven't ordered your Mother's Day flowers yet, make sure to visit ProFlowers.com for an amazing deal. ProFlowers has a Mother's Day special for radio listeners. Get 100 gorgeous blooms for mom with a free glass vase for $19.99. And if you want to make her day even more special, upgrade to a premium vase and add gourmet chocolates for just $9.99 more. Mom will be so happy when she unwraps her beautiful bouquet of blooms, guaranteed to stay fresh and beautiful for at least one full week. Each time she looks at her Mother's Day flowers, she'll think of you. But hurry, this deal expires soon, so make sure to place your order today. The only way to get this incredible deal is to go to proflowers.com slash radio right now and enter the code PLOW, P-L-O-W, proflowers.com slash radio code PLOW, P-L-O-W. That's proflowers.com slash radio and enter code PLOW, P-L-O-W. You have all seen and heard about the elements of the periodic table. These elements are the building blocks of everything in the universe. You, my friends, are made from these elements. A shortage of any of these important trace elements can lead to disease. Go with the science and take the Lady Talk Health Challenge and get all 90 essential trace elements with a healthy start pack at LadyTalkLive.com or call 855-333-LADY. That's 855-333-5239. Research shows it's not just what you put in your body that counts, it's what you put on it as well. Why not use an all-natural, healthy mineral-based makeup that actually benefits your skin? 
Once you experience the airiness and flawless coverage of Longevity Mineral Makeup, you will never use anything else. With Longevity, the perception of your complexion will be natural perfection. Animal-friendly mineral makeup at Mary Lou Health. That's M-A-R-I-L-U-Health.com. Or call 855-321-HEALTH. Hi, this is Ted Phillips listening to the Paracast, and it's as good as it gets, believe me. I think we need Andy Circus on the show. He does good apes, I understand. Oh, oh okay. That, that right. was awful. I, I admit it. All right. Boy, it's down to the last segment with Lauren Coleman joining Gene and Chris in the Paracast. Bringing you up to date on cryptozoological research, cases, studies, questions from our listeners, whether humans are giant egomaniacal apes, and we can all argue about that. Well, I think, I think uh, there are certain um, developments in, in the field, such as the, uh, the Rick Dyer uh, hoax and, and some real questionable uh, claims about footage and stuff. And, and I think uh, Lauren is right that we really need to focus on on the positive. Um, there's more than enough people, uh, you know, pointing out flaws in in particular people's, uh, you know, whatever they're claiming. Well, one of the but, one of the problems that I mean, I'm on the edge watching the ufology field fight and destroy itself with personality conflicts. Right. I think that. The Bigfoot field, as it matures, has the possibility to only focus on the hoaxers, the distractors, the people that uh, have huge egos, and really miss the whole boat that uh, last weekend, for instance, over a thousand people uh, gathered in Ohio to share their common interest in Bigfoot. There wow. were no fights there. There were no just fights, there were no yelling about different personalities. Those people just shared notes and really were on the same page. Uh, I, I think that that's, there's a lot of new people coming into this field. There's a lot of young people, right. uh, a lot of culturally diverse people. It's Bigfoot uh, really does, Bigfoot and cryptozoology really does take uh, individuals' interest in animals and mysteries and really combines it in a positive right. way. It so sounds to me like it's a lot more together than the UFO field, which is eternally in conflict. Well, I certainly think that that is true. I think that there's a lot more harmony going on, and you don't, you know, you can obviously jump on some forums or get in an email exchange with people, and but uh, most of us, I mean, even Peter Byrne, uh, who hated me for a few years and was making claims that I'd taken photographs when he'd actually loaned them to me. He apologized recently, and he's he's in his 80s. And there's a, a kind of maturing of the field where people really don't hold grudges for long, and we all kind of know we're in this together. Right. Uh, so that's kind of positive, I think. Yeah, and it's also positive that we're getting intelligent young people involved and having the opportunity to educate them uh, in a way that will allow them to do what you've done, Lauren, and that is uh, carry the f ball down the field and, and take the the field forward from the uh, the John Greens and uh, and Renee and and Bob Gimlin and, and others uh, have in the past. And it's important to keep the continuity and 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 keep uh, you know the the goal in mind, and that is to determine once and for all uh, what these people are seeing and what these uh, creatures could possibly be. Yep, yeah, and. A lot of these individuals are now professors or they're in academic situations or they're right. teachers. Uh, and when I got into this, professors would just, they'd laugh this off. They'd right. laugh this off. I did papers on the survival of Neanderthal, and I got a C on the paper even though it was an A paper because he didn't like the subject. So, you know, you see it turning around and people come to the museum, people are writing me and they're they're. In, you know, they're PhD candidates or they're already doctors in universities. And it's really kind of a wonderful trend. And uh, it's almost as if we're winning from the inside. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. If you're seeing people uh, with postgraduate aspirations and they're able to 
get particular subjects and hypotheses okayed by review boards and that sort of thing. That that is a big step forward. You don't see that yeah. in ufology. <laughs> You know, no, I haven't uh, seen any opt optical physicist uh, candidates for a doctorate uh, try to study U U UFOs or someone involved with uh, diagnostic uh, propulsion or magnetohydrodynamics or some of these other, you know, a little bit off the beaten track scientific subjects. But these are perfect avenues to do that, and I don't see anybody attempting it. No. Whereas within uh, cryptozoology and zoology and anthropology, the whole basis that we want to talk to the uh, native peoples, the local peoples, that these creatures are ethno-known uh, as a basis is really caught on. And you have field biologists and conservation workers that are in villages talking to individuals about what animals are out there and then discovering new animals, which is the method of cryptozoology. It doesn't matter to us that Bigfoot's not discovered. What matters is a new lizard or a new frog or a new monkey is discovered, and that that's the way to do it, to talk right. to local people. Yeah. And, boy, I'll tell you, having grown up in the Pacific Northwest and knowing how vast uh, areas of, of Alberta, British Columbia, all the way up into the Yukon, parts of, of, of Alaska, are just, I mean, there are places where humans have maybe never ventured. Uh, it is so vast and so remote there, and it's not beyond at least my imagination to imagine that, that you could have uh, a thriving population of undiscovered hominids uh, living in, in that vast area where there are no roads, uh, many villages you can only get to by, by rivers or by flying in, for instance, and any sort of field work and organized uh, efforts in those areas, I think are, are going to at some point uh, produce uh, results myself. Yeah. A lot of people are, of course, hiking in those areas. And Grover Krantz said that he thought that there was one Bigfoot for every 10,000 black bear. And you ask people, how often do you see a black bear? How often do you see a mountain lion? Right. And, uh, you know, people are kind of shocked that they don't really see them that often. So why in the world would they see a Bigfoot that often? Right. Yeah, especially one that, that probably has a higher level of intelligence than a black bear or, or uh, any other uh, large predator or omnivore out there like a cat. I've been yeah. lucky enough to see mountain lions. I lived in you know at the base of a 14,000-foot mountain, so there were lots of cats, lots of bears trapped one in my yard. But the average person studying this stuff maybe in Chicago or – somewhere in, you know, in the suburban area or whatever, uh, they're not going to get the opportunity uh, as readily, obviously. Right, right. And back to the giant ape question, if they are giant apes or if they're hominids or whatever you want to call them, they're intelligent, like you were mentioning. And one of the reasons we don't see that many of them crossing the roads is they're probably aware that, uh, you know, the animals that cross the roads get hit, and they're called dead roadkill. And so... Bigfoot, the young males are the ones that are seen crossing the roads, but most of the sightings of family groups, of clans, are deeper in the woods when hikers see them, not uh, right. the one or two crossing the roads. Right. Sounds yeah, like the Beatles song. The Sounds like the Beatles song. Why don't we do it on the road? Well, it's in the road. I was going to ask, why, why does Big, Bigfoot even cross the road? Like kind of like the chicken joke, you know. Why did Bigfoot cross the road? We well, have thirty seconds for the answer. To eat the berries on the other side. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lauren Coleman, please tell our listeners where they can find more of the stuff that you do. Well, there's a few sites. Um, CryptozoologyMuseum.com is a very elaborate site for our museum, and there's all kinds of different pull-down tabs where they can get more information. CryptoZooNews.com is my website for my blog. Uh, and then also LaurenColeman.com has a little uh, information. And my blog, which used to be called uh, Copycat Effect, is now called The Twilight Language. And people can just look that up on Google and they'll find Twilight Language. And I have all kinds of different things going on there on a daily basis. You can find us on theparacast.com. That's theparacast.com. Or go to forum.theparacast.com for our cutting-edge forums. Amazing discussions, and you can always ask questions of upcoming guests. You can also find us on Twitter. We're known as The Paracast. There are two Paracast 
fan clubs on Facebook. Don't ask me how that happened. I'll figure it out someday. Chris O'Brien's book is Stalking the Herd. If you go to stalkingtheherd.com, you can check that out or ourstrangeplanet.com. And by the way, if you order Chris's book from his site, he will autograph it as long as his fingers can keep it together. Lauren Coleman, thanks for joining us on the Paracast. It's great to be here for the day. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. 